Let's do it. This is the SEC Insider Hit. Hit, hit. And it's presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. Tom Luganbill joining us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. You can watch the show right now. Go to YouTube, search Out of Bounds Sports. We've got a new uh, image up on the screen. We think it's great. Want to know what you think. If you want to watch it, tell us what you think. Uh, Jason created it last night. I think it's pretty funny. So you can go to YouTube, search Out of Bounds Sports, watch the show. We've got some new helmets up. I don't have an old Miss helmet up because I gave it to somebody at the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook and Lounge last Thursday because I'm a super nice guy, allegedly. Um, and Mississippi State's not on the set just because of the way they're playing. Uh, kind of offense and defense, but definitely defense. They're 112th in the country. Not as bad as LSU, who's 118th in scoring efficiency. But on the set this week, Tito's Vodka helmet, Georgia helmet, A&M helmet, Kentucky helmet, couple of bush lights, and, and Lane Train's bobblehead doll. So I think we're doing pretty good, but we've got a new graphic up over my left shoulder. I'd love to know what you think about it on the Ag Up Equipment text line, 601-885-3776. All right, let's get to Tom. The SEC Insider Hit is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. Uh, Tom, what surprised you more? The fact that uh, LSU and Ole Miss combined for over 1,300 uh, offensive yards, total yards and offense, or the fact that Auburn play Georgia all the way down to the wire? Probably Auburn and Georgia. Um, you know, I was really impressed with Auburn's defense and, and how they hung in there and the plays that they made. I think the environment, I thought Kirby Smart hit the, the nail on the head. Like, people don't have an appreciation for, number one, how hard it is to win on the road, but particularly at that place is really, really difficult. And, you know, quite honestly, I came away feeling like, you know, Brock Bowers should be a Heisman Trophy finalist. I mean, if they don't have him, I don't know what Georgia does on offense because uh, he's a one-man wrecking crew. And at some point, some some people are going to take him away or work really hard to take him away. And will Carson Beck and the rest of that roster be able to function without relying so heavily on him? And so I, 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 I have an appreciation for Georgia and how they were able to pull it out and win the game. But – wasn't all that surprised going into the Ole Miss and LSU game, given the way both of those offenses have been playing or been capable of playing. And then once you got Trey Harris and, and Quinshaw Judkins back in full go, completely changed the Rebels offensively. It sure did. Huge win for, for Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. Let, let me stay on Georgia and, and just for, here, for a second here. Yeah. And, and then we'll go to, uh, to Ole Miss and, and LSU and some of the other things happening. Tom Luganbill, National College Football Analyst with ESPN. He joins us on the Out of Bounds Show. So I mentioned that uh, LSU is ranked 118th in defensive scoring efficiency, uh, yeah. which is dead last in Power 5. They've got some G5 teams behind them, uh, like Temple and Buffalo. Good grief. So um, this weekend, Kentucky is the only SEC in the top 10 in defensive scoring efficiency. Now, we know, you know, we've seen this dog and pony show before. Georgia's a 14 and a half point favorite. Brad White is an absolute freak as a DC. Do you do you believe that there's any chance that Kentucky's defensive coordinator, Brad White, and Stoops can take away Bowers so that this game goes deep into the fourth quarter, Luke's? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll have a fantastic plan, whether they're going to double him, whether they're going to brack him, um, whether they're going to put, put him in a position where they don't give up anything over the top, it, meaning that if they're going to throw it to him, they're going to force it to be thrown underneath and then rally up and tackle. Now, that's easier said than done, <laughs> but it beats the hell out of giving up a 40-yarder, right? So, you know, I do think they'll have a really good plan. And then on the flip side of that, all right, I think that from what we saw, to me, it looks like Kentucky's getting back to bully ball, right? Like, what, what was this program founded upon? It was bloodying your nose at the point of attack, running the football, 
having a very competent uh, play action passing game to, to supplement it. And they've really gotten back to the, that this year, but I don't know if I feel as confident about their passing game complementing the running game if they don't have a day like they had last week. I don't know if you're just going to be able to line up and run the ball at will um, at Georgia consistently. Now, we saw Auburn rip off some, some QB runs, and I like their plan because they knew they don't have anything else, so they were going to force Georgia to have to defend all 11 players, and they did that with quarterback run. That's, you know, that, that's not what Kentucky is on offense. So can you, can you take Kentucky offensively, and if they had to go on the road and throw the ball to win, could they? That's the question I have. Right. I doubt it, but I see where you're going. Ray Davis is a dude for Kentucky. Luke's. Oh, big time. Big time. Damn. I mean, they are, they, again, they like, they just line up and run it downhill. I mean, it's, and, and we've heard Mark Stoops talk about this. Each of the last couple of offseasons, we've got to get back to who we are. We've got to get back to what this program was based upon originally. And he's right. I mean, those are, those are things that you've got to do. Um, and, and they look like they're finally getting that done. Okay. Tom Luganville on the Out of Bounds Show. Let's go to LSU at Ole Miss. Uh, Lane Kiffin, and uh, you can poke holes in this. Just I, I'm going to give you a little bit here, and then I'll tee you up. All right. Okay. So, fun ball game. All kinds of momentum swings. Uh, Lane Kiffin was the best play caller in the stadium. He called the game the win all the way down um, to the end of the game. I thought LSU didn't. Got, got conservative. Pete Golding got those two stops. They win the game. Uh, they they both had, to me, the better play callers in the game. Now, and, and so credit to Lane, and you, you mentioned Quinshawn Judkins and, and, and Trey Harris being healthy, no doubt. And Prescorn looked good, too. All right. Yeah. So, a, as Tom Luganbill, who has been involved with ESPN recruiting for over 15 years, how shot, surprised, holy blank are you that LSU's defense is – ranked 118th in defensive scoring efficiency with you knowing what type of player yeah. they have signed the last 20 years. Yeah, beyond stunned. It's it's unfathomable to see a team with their athletes and their personnel play like that is is it's mind-boggling to me. And uh and it, to be honest with you, it, it it should be by everybody. We've all if you're a fan of college football and you've watched this team absolutely maul people defensively for the better part of the last 20 years to they're like a shell of themselves. And I don't, I, listen, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I just know that uh, it, it, put it this way. What if they weren't what they are on offense? They'd oh. be in real trouble. Wow. Golly, they'd be staring at six and six or something, but they'll win some more games just because of yeah. Jaden and, and neighbors and Thomas and those dudes. Yeah. Okay. Um, man, Brian Kelly. So they hired Pete Jenkins. I don't know if you saw this, Tom, mm -hmm. as you know, their D line coach stepped down in August. Um, yeah. so they, they've been shuffling around. Pete Jenkins is a legendary, as you know, defensive line coach, 82, yeah. 83 years old. He's been working for Saban among others for years and they've hired him to come in and kind of be a an analyst type deal for this week, probably going forward. Not good for Matt House, I don't think long term. Um, but it does send a message that the head coach isn't happy, and uh, and they need some more eyes in the building and more thoughts and more ideas of how to to get this team uh, functioning. I guess you could say doesn't have to be great, but get them functioning. And the thing is, like, I think sometimes when things like this happen, it, it's it's more about simplification than it is anything else. Like, I, 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 are we doing? To, that's what you got to ask yourself. Are we doing too much? Are we asking kids to do something that right. they're not capable of? Are we overloading them? Could we just line up with our athletes and play base, keep the ball in front of us, and maybe we're going to be a little oversimplified, but that's okay. That's the first question I think that you've got to ask yourself in all of this. Um, and I'm sure they've been doing that each of the last couple of weeks. All right, let's go. I, I, they don't have the same type players, but they've been known for defense for a long time. Uh, yeah. Mississippi State's 112th in defensive scoring efficiency. And 
they're giving up like uh, 80% quarterbacks against them are completing 80% of their passes. Can you yeah. believe that this defense is that bad? Uh, again, no, and especially when, you know, the the head coach is the, is the defensive guy, you know. Um, that's what I think gets really frustrating for people is, is that component uh, of it. And, you know, I think it, it's, a com- it's a combination of things. I don't think that team's got a lot of confidence right now. I don't either. Uh, that, I, I think their confidence is wearing thin, and now guess what happens? You start to second guess and you start to finger point. And those things are difficult to stop. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to get out of the, get out of this hole because, um, you know, they had a, a couple of bright spots the other day. The, the score was a little bit different than I think the game was played to some degree. Um, but uh, certainly not good enough to be playing winning football. Right. Tom Luganville, ESPN on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. We are the Out of Bounds Show brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue, the official health care provider of the Out of Bounds Show. Um, I guess, do will we find out for now who is the best team in the SEC West this weekend with Bama at A&M? Yeah, we, I, I think we will. And I, the, the interesting thing about this matchup to me is – I think this is going to be a game where Alabama is going to have to throw the football to win because say what you want about Texas A&M, that team on defense is finally starting to play to the level of their athletes and nobody can run the football on them. I mean, Miami put up 48 points on them, but could not run the football. Well, how did they do it? They did it in the kicking game and they did it through the air. Is Alabama capable of doing that from what we've seen to this point? I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that. And so this is going to be a big moment for Jalen Milrow. I think Alabama's been really good on defense. Their last two weeks, they really got after uh, uh, both Ole Miss and, and Mississippi State. I think yeah. they're gaining confidence on that side of the ball. Oh, um, yes. Can they, can they throw it? Can, okay. can they line up if, for some reason, they're not successful running the football on first and second down on the road, and could Jalen Milrow move the chains through the air? Because I think if he can't, I think A&M wins the game. If he can, Alabama wins the game. Ooh, I like that. Okay, here's my take. I was in the stadium Saturday, Mississippi State, Alabama, and he can't he can't see the field, Tom. Um, you know, even though they took care of business, things got away from Mississippi State at seventeen ten going into halftime when yeah. when Will Rogers threw the pick to the dude. Um, he's got people running wide open and he can't see them. He can't see it. Yeah. And that's alarming, and it's it better get corrected and cleared up because um, I'm telling you, I think it's going to be tough, tough sledding on the ground against that group. And I'll say this, you know, we talked about this all off season, didn't we? About you know, this is going to be one of the most aside from Colorado, this is going to be one of the more fascinating experiments to watch, and that is you know Jimbo Fisher and Bobby Petrino, and it's clearly working. They have a different identity. They can push the ball downfield. They create explosive plays. They can run it. They can throw it. Like, to me, what I'm seeing is a head coach that's turned it over. He's coaching the football team and letting the offensive coordinator run the offense. That's what I've seen to this point. I, I agree with you. Tom Luganville on the Out of Bounds Show. Lugs, they're 70 spots better than they were last year at this time. Offensive scoring efficiency with Petrina. Yeah, oh, yeah no question. And, and then here's the thing. As good as Connor Wegman was, they may be the one team in college football that has the perfect backup situation. Yes. Because if that guy was going to get hurt, you have a dude that you know so much about that has seen so many things, that's been through trials and tribulations, has seen some highs, seen some lows, and has been pretty productive when he's played. He pops into the game versus Auburn, and it was, they didn't miss a beat, right? And, I, I, again, I think having Max Johnson there, Bobby Petrino's done a good job preparing him, and that kid's shown up and, and, and played. He played well. Okay, so Bama and A and M are the leaders in the clubhouse with Ole Miss at third in the West. Is that where you are? Yes, that's what I. That's where I would be at right now. Um, and obviously, you can't put Ole Miss uh, above those. Uh, certainly not Alabama yet, just because Alabama has the head to head. But uh, yeah, I think that's valid. Um, and I, listen, there's a lot of football to be played, and it's going to be very interesting to see, like. How do these teams hang in there, right? I mean, because this for Alabama, you lose this one, you're out. Yep. 
Like you're, like, I'm talking about the college football playoff. Sure. And so, like, this, th- there's a lot riding on this thing right now. Okay, with Ole Miss, their offense is really good when healthy, and their defense oh, yeah. is average. So the question is, is that enough to get to the finish line? Depending on what happens with A&M and Bama, with all the landmines that they have to navigate, but so does Ole Miss. Um, but I get the sense you lean towards the winner of this weekend's game. To I, I yeah, I do, I do, but I still I feel good about Ole Miss because I don't know the rest of the way outside of A and M. If they're gonna, they can be average or competent on defense with who they are on offense, and win out the rest of the way. I really think they could, um, because they're gonna if they're healthy. And you hit the nail on the head. That is an entirely different team when Trey Harris and Quinshaw Jarkins are on the field. Now they go to Georgia. Um, yeah, they go to Georgia. Right. And then now you're going to have to ask yourself, well, what if they were able to? Now we also have to be fair and say, okay, is Georgia? What is George? Excuse me. What is Ole Miss on the road? Because they did not play well at Tulane. They obviously lost to Alabama. Oh, they're awesome but at home. You're, you're a great. You make a great point. On the, they're right. totally different team at home. Totally, and and that's concerning because you'll you listen. Every coach will tell you if if you're going to be a championship team, you're going to have to win close games. You're going to have to win on the road. Uh, and I don't, you know, I'm not convinced that they've proven that yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, one more thing on, on Bama at A&M. Um, Max, you mentioned Max Johnson. This is an unbelievable story, how this thing mm-hmm. could shake out because he's got oh, no. such a wonderful, uh, he's got such a, not, not wonderful with personality, such a talented offensive coordinator in, in Bobby yeah. Petrino. Um, I mean, this kid's got mad skills, Tom. We talked about him at LSU. I mean, the guy has been able to play football at a high level for a long time. It just didn't work out. Like those last, I think it was the last three games or four games he started that year um, was um, he threw eight touchdowns to one interception. Wow. Like he was rolling. Like they were good, man. And that was when I think they, that was, wasn't that the shoe game? They beat going and beat Florida in the swamp. And Dan Mullen last year, that Orgeron last year, I was that game. Like he's, I think it was. So anyway, yeah, he's played good football, man. He really has. Tom Luganbilt, National College Football Analyst with ESPN. He joins us on the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone ESPN. All right, let's go to neutral site game. Okay. Oklahoma and Texas. Both undefeated. Oklahoma hasn't played anybody, but they've done what they're supposed to do. Now, are you leaning? Are you leaning hard Texas Longhorns, or or do you think that Venables and Levy and the crew can make this a hell of a ball game? I think it will be a really really good ball game if Oklahoma somehow comes up with a way of handling the Texas defensive front. I I didn't have an appreciation for just how good and how deep they are up front until I saw them in person. They looked like some of the better SEC teams we've seen when it comes to the front. And you couldn't say that about Texas over the last however many years, right? And so to me, because Oklahoma hasn't played anybody, nobody's challenged them. Like they haven't had a difficult time running the ball. They haven't had a difficult time throwing the ball because they've outmanned everybody they've played. That isn't going to be the case in this one. Now it's a rivalry matchup. I think both teams will be heavily prepared to play and, and be ready to roll. Um, but Texas, the way I would describe it, Texas is by far the better team. Oklahoma is vastly improved from what they were a year ago, regardless of who they've played. You know, last year, if you recall, they came just throwing up all over themselves out of the gate. And, I mean, they, they couldn't play defense. Oh, they were they terrible. Move the ball. It was brutal. That's not, that's not what's happening in Norman now. They're vastly improved. Okay. Uh, are you, but, so so you, you think this could be a one-possession game between Oklahoma and Texas? Only if Oklahoma, only if Oklahoma can block Texas. If not, it will not be a one possession game. All right. In my opinion. All right. Let's go to Arkansas at Ole Miss. What do you see from Arkansas? And do you, this is an 11 point spread. It's about to go to two touchdowns. It's moving. Yeah. Um, I don't see any way Arkansas can slow down lane and dart. Is that what you see when you look at this matchup? 
Yeah, and I think I think you know Arkansas has got a little bit of a broken heart right now. They've been so close, right, and they've lost some heartbreakers, and they might be reeling a little bit from a confidence standpoint, like we talked about from Mississippi State, where you're just sitting there going, oh, God, can we just get a ball to bounce our way, or can we just get a play to come our way? And it hasn't happened, and so you take that versus a team right now that's riding on an all-time high of confidence, and I would lean towards Ole Miss. Okay, yeah, I, th- I think it could it could get away from. Why is Lane so good right out of the gate? Scripted place. Well, a lot of it has to do with do you have a completion or do you have a big play on first down? Because if they do then the tempo speeds up, and that's exactly what they want to be in. If you notice with them, when that doesn't happen, they slow down, and they're completely out of sync. They are. They, they, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to watch. Like, I watched on the side, and they went down against Tulane in three plays, covered like 70 yards, and, and cut through them like a, a knife through hot butter, right? From that series on and the rest of the game, they could not gain yards on first down struggled to gain yards on second down. So now they're not ahead of the chains. Now they're worried about third down, and they're not going fast. And when that happens to them, they do not function in the same manner. So I think a lot of it has to do with look, look at success on early downs when the game starts, and you're generally going to see if, if they get seven or 10 or six or 12, the next play is coming 100 miles up. They will snap that ball in less than 13 seconds. It, it, it's uh, crazy, and it and a lot there. There are so, many times throughout the season where with Lane they're unbelievable in the first quarter, and then the defense figures them out in the majority of the second and third quarter, and then Lane gets it back going in the fourth quarter. Tom, yeah, I see that too. Yeah, it's it, you're right. It's like one team adjusts a little bit, kind of gets a beat on them, and then Lane gets a beat on what they've adjusted to, and then he changes, and now there's only one quarter left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think this is just what he is. He he is going to be aggressive, and it is going to hurt him at times, and it is going to be unbelievable and amazing at times, like last weekend. Is that what you see? Yeah, I, I think that that's what his DNA is, right? Um, you know, like the difference between him and let's just say a Lincoln Riley is Lane is very gifted on the offensive side of the ball, but does not have the blind spot for defense that Lincoln has. Like, there is a blind spot at USC. I do not know, understand Lincoln Riley's mindset when it comes to the defensive side of the football. And I think that Lane Kiffin knows that the only way to eventually beat an Alabama, consistently beat an LSU, consistently beat an Auburn or Georgia, is we got to continue to get better players on. Like he acknowledges it and recognizes it because he knows it's true. That so he's he's gifted, but he understands the other side where he needs help. Right, and that that's why the Pete Golding hire was so big. Yeah, he, he I think so. He understands staffing, and ninety nine percent of coaches don't, as you know. And and Lincoln not um, moving off Grinch is a head scratcher. Have a great week, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right. Tom Luganbill, National College Football Analyst with ESPN. He joined us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. Bundle your car and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. They'll take care of you and your family and your business. Favorites.com. F-A-V-E. Favorites.com. Detillier at 830. 